Today's video is all about VLANs, or Virtual Local Area Networks. As part of my Rack revamp project, I'm finally getting around to doing something I should have done a long time ago, and that's split up my network into logical chunks. And if you run servers or a home lab in your own house, you should too. Today's video is brought to you by NordPass's End of Winter Sale. From now until February 25th, you can take 70% off a two-year subscription and get an extra month on the house. NordPass makes managing your online passwords a breeze with their user-friendly desktop and mobile applications. It allows you to access all of your passwords on any device from wherever you are. And with NordPass's zero-knowledge architecture, your data is encrypted on your own device before it ever reaches their servers. Visit nordpass.com slash craft today to take advantage of this limited time offer. That's nordpass.com slash craft. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. First off, let's talk about your home network. Typically, your off-the-shelf router is configured to be a flat network. That is, every device can broadcast to every other device that's on it. Broadcast traffic in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's what makes wireless printing, AirPlay, Chromecast, and a variety of other systems work on your network. Broadcast traffic is one device, let's say your cell phone or laptop, calling out to the rest of your network saying, hey, I'm a cell phone, who else is here? And much like a dog barking in your backyard, every other dog in the neighborhood is bound to respond. This will cause other devices to announce who they are and ask who else is there in return, and so on and so forth until every dog is satisfied they have all of the information they need. For most homes, this isn't a huge deal. I myself have two dogs, and they only bark for a minute or two when the Amazon driver delivers packages. Oh, we were talking about networks. Right. Much like dogs in a neighborhood, the more devices there are on your network, the noisier it is to live there. And for networks with dozens of clients, a stack of servers, IoT devices, security cameras, wireless access points, and more, those broadcasts can add up to the point of causing delays in other traffic. Fortunately, there's a simple solution, and that's splitting your network into multiple smaller networks called VLANs. These networks will allow traffic intended for a single device to be routed between them, but will deny broadcast traffic from being let in. In technical terms, it will allow unicast traffic, but deny multicast traffic. The question is, how do you divide your network in a way that still allows all of your services to work? In my home network, I have client devices like computers, cell phones, and tablets. I've got IoT devices like smart lights here in my office. I've obviously got my servers and networking equipment, and I've got one printer. I've also got a dedicated home lab just for tinkering on, which I would like on its own VLAN to avoid confusion with services I actually use here on my network. Next up, let's talk IP addressing. First off, I probably know the IP address of your router. It's 192.168.1.1. Freaky, right? Actually, that's the most common address space to use in a home network. There are three ranges of IP addresses reserved for private use, that is, not publicly accessible on the internet. Those are any IP address starting with 10, that is 10.0.0.0, through 10.255.255.255. This space is typically used in enterprise networks, as there are 16,777,216 IP addresses available within this range. There's the IP range of 172.16 through 172.31. And while this was originally reserved for businesses, it's also the least used among IP addresses because of the odd starting IP and the fact that it only offers a million and change IP addresses in the block. Then for home networks, there's the IP range of 192.168. Now, most home routers will use this range, as there aren't that many instances of a house needing more than 65,536 IP addresses under the same roof. Now, my home network has been using the 192.168 IP range for quite a while. And while I could stick with that, I much prefer using the 10 range. So let's go ahead and lay out my new network, configure my IP address ranges for DHCP, DNS, and prepare to get everything moved over. I'll be doing this today on the Unify UDM Pro. Now, for every firewall or router that's out there, there's also a different method of configuring VLANs. This isn't a tutorial for your specific device, rather just an overview of the logic that goes behind it. The first step in all this is determining how you want to split up your devices and documenting it before you make any changes. For my network, I'm going to create four separate VLANs. Servers are going to go on the 10.0.0.0, IoT devices and that lowly printer on 10.0.1.0, client devices on 10.0.2.0, and my home lab is going to go on 10.10.0.0. 
The main network is going to have Pi-hole serve as the DHCP and DNS server, making internal logging and local DNS management a little bit simpler. The home lab network will serve its own DHCP and DNS, which I'll build out later on. First, I'm gonna open up my UDM Pro inside a web browser. On the left, go to Settings, and then click on Networks. As you can see, I've already set up the home lab VLAN in preparation for this move. If I click on Edit, you can see this VLAN is set up as number 1010, with the IP address range of 10.10.0.0 .10 through 255, indicated by the slash 24 at the end. This will give me 254 client IP addresses in this range, which should be more than enough for any home lab experiments I might be conducting. During this video, all the new VLANs will be configured using the UDM Pro for DHCP and DNS until after I have completed the move. Once the VLANs are ready to go, I'll configure Pi-hole as the new DHCP and DNS server. I might even do a video on that one if you ask nicely. One nice thing about the UDM Pro is the VLANs are all automatically assigned to all ports. As I recommend using the UDM Pro as a router only and not as your main switch, this works out very nicely, as your switches downstream can then assign the VLANs to individual ports as needed. Now then, let's go ahead and create the Server VLAN. On the Networks tab, click on Create New Network. I'm going to name this network Servers. Seems obvious, right? For the network purpose, this will be a corporate network, as we want communication open to other VLANs. The VLAN number is completely arbitrary, but I like to use something similar to the IP address range inside the VLAN, so we'll ID this one as VLAN 1000. Under Gateway IP and Subnet, I'm going to enter the IP of 10.0.0.1 slash 24. The slash 24 at the end indicates this is a Class C network, ranging from 10.0.0.0 through 10.0.0.255 with a gateway address of 10.0.0.1. Under domain name, I'm going to use craft.local. And finally, for DHCP range, I like leaving a small gap at the beginning and using a range of 10.0.0.11 through 10.0.0.254. So why didn't I use through 255 if the network supports 0 through 255 in the IP range? Well, 0 is reserved as the network number and identifies the network itself. And 255 is the broadcast address for this network, which is how devices broadcast to an entire range. They address 10.0.0.255, and any data received by the switch for that IP address rebroadcast those packets to the addresses 1 through 254. If everything looks correct, go ahead and click on Save, and then repeat this exact same process for the IoT and client VLANs. Now that you have your VLAN set up, how do you assign a VLAN to a specific device? The simplest solution is to use your managed network switch to untag an individual port with the desired VLAN. An untagged port means that all devices downstream of that port will be assigned that specific VLAN. So on my network switch, I would assign all of my server ports as untagged with VLAN 1000, wired client IPs with VLAN 1002, IoT devices with VLAN 1001. But what if you have switch ports that have multiple devices downstream and need multiple VLANs assigned? For instance, I want to move my Unify access points to the server VLAN, but wireless clients may be on the client or IoT VLANs. Untagging a port with a specific VLAN means that VLAN will be the default for any device connecting. However, some devices have the ability to assign their own VLAN IDs, or assign other VLAN IDs to clients further downstream. In the case of my wireless access points, I'm going to set up those ports as untagged on the server VLAN 1000 and tagged on VLANs 1001 and 1002. I can then assign any clients that connect to the wireless access points a specific VLAN inside of Unify. So smart lights will go to the 1001 IoT VLAN, and phones, tablets, and laptops will go to the 1002 client VLAN. Now again, for network switches, there are as many methods of assigning VLANs as there are network switches on the market. These terms are fairly universal though, and should give you a good place to start looking for how to assign a VLAN on your own devices. But unless you're trying to assign VLANs on a Procurve switch, I'm likely of very little help to you. In the next few days, I'll have some work ahead of me getting the network rearranged into the new VLANs, but it will be much better organized when it's all completed. Hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll also be doing a video on PRTG, which is a free network and hardware monitoring service I run here on my network. So make sure you keep an eye to the channel so you don't miss that one. 
On your way down to that subscribe button, make sure to drop this video a like. You can also follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing if you want to keep up with my daily shenanigans. If you can't quite get enough craft computing, there are ways you can get more. First off, join us for our weekly live show, Talking Heads, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on YouTube for the latest in beer and tech news, or on Anchor.fm or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. You can also join me in my exclusive Discord server and get some behind-the-scenes access if you join the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are both down in the video description and really do help me keep the lights on around here. So, like I said, a lot of cool projects coming up, but that's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. In a long line of beers I have purchased just for the label, today I'm cracking open Ex Novo's Strat Your Stuff, and uh, how could you even resist that label or that name? Uh, this is a hazy IPA brewed with Strata and Galaxy Hops, clocking in at 6.9%. Nice. Boy, a lot of grapefruit on this one. Citrusy in the definitely not an orange kind of way. Ooh, that's nice. It's kind of smooth and creamy right up front, but then classic like a hazy, it kind of dries your mouth out as it goes through and it leaves you with a real clean, crisp citrus aftertaste. That's good. Yep, I'm about three ounces in now and uh, the creaminess is gone. This is all hazy. This is a hazy that's going to accumulate over time and eventually uh, irritate your throat. <coughs> Yeah, I have the same problem with this hazy that I have with a lot of other hazies, and that's halfway through it, all I can taste is hazy. There's no more defining flavors. It's just acidic. Like, it was really, really pleasant at first. Like I said, it had this creaminess to it. There was a wonderful citrus note on the back end of it. And now it just tastes like any other hazy I've ever had. And I'm kind of disappointed by that. Yeah, that burn is upfront and immediate and it literally cancels out every other flavor that was coming out within this beer. That's unfortunate. You know, beers I don't like really do end up being like taking your medicine at a certain point. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, at this point it's just a hazy. I had high hopes for this one, I really did. If you like hazies, it's got everything there. But man, I want the beer I had in the first three ounces. That was way better. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, that's a lot of beer left. Hold on. See what I said about pacing? <laughs>